What up, everybody? Happy Friday. Damn, dude, another crazy week, man. I swear you gotta be a bit insane, right, to be putting it in like this every day. It just, like, consumes you and extracts your energy. And the good thing is, right, it's not like a troll extracting your energy or, or happiness, so you can make use of that extraction back your way for your family. But damn, man, if that balance, that scale ain't hard in real life. Uh, I'm gonna get... Hoge Classic popping, but first let me do the sound check, right? Jersey, I heard you beep on, so I, how you? Let me hear your voice. I'm here. Yes, I can hear you, bro. I can hear you. That's what's up. Shout out to Dan and Callup and Looney on there, and resell my cards. What it is? Got some good cards. I was a big uh, collector growing up, man. Nineties era, always breaking packs. Damn, good times, Pogs and all that shit. God damn. Anyways, uh. I got a hoge step, man, by the one and only Jimmy Lee. A nice long-winded one. It's a vibe. And he's a rocker, man. He's traveled the world. I forget what band, like Puddle of Mud or some shit. Like, this dude's legit. And he's a talented producer. And hoge step led to hoge step volume two, Big Keys and Jimmy Lee. And that's like, you know, hip-hop banger. But we got something a little different here. Some house, some, some dubstep. It's a vibe here. Four minutes, 38 seconds, and then we'll get it cracking.
Jimmy Lee. God damn, it's just like he's right here. I mean, that is like audible art right there. Like my heart, my dopamine, right? Like everything flowing. I feel that. I fucking feel that, man. It fills me up, man. And and honestly, vibrations, waves, I don't even get into all that. But as humans, man, that energy is real. And we got to embrace these things, yo. Uh, but I digress. It's a Friday, man. Happy Friday, Hoj Nation. I got to say, man, working the grind and hustle week after week for years in our industry of, of not only like blockchain or Web3 or AI, but just in innovative technologies in general, really takes unconditional commitment mixed with some unreasonable thinking. I mean, our industry here, right, hasn't stood the test of proven time yet. It hasn't reached mainstream audiences at scale or matured its professional nature and understanding in a way that is digestible. There are no incredibly historic case studies and examples of the way to find everlasting market fit and viability. Sure, we see blockchain and AI startups winning all over and, you know, some for years. And the thing is, we're still so damn early and, and would really benefit from analyzing decades of industry data and metrics that, you know, like the legacy industries like automobiles or, or professional sports, right, have, have that opportunity to do. And while that may make it harder to choose your ultimate go-to-market strategy, it really is a mega opportunity to mold the standard and the go-to market strategy with whatever you're building or taking to market. You know, last time I checked, and my numbers could be a little off, right? But there was maybe 5% of the total global population like holding any cryptocurrency, much less using the blockchains or understanding this on-chain world. In the AI space, I mean, look, no doubt this year has seen meteoric growth and investments pour in from all over. And really accelerated, you know, the technology, the product maturity that the AI industry is seeing, right? Making everyday usable products faster, especially compared to the pace that we're running here at blockchains. But even in the AI adoption, while much larger already than blockchain, there really, you know, there's still a world of opportunity, right? The arbitrage opportunities to simply educate small businesses at the localized levels about AI tools and how to integrate them into your current business and its workflows, you know, and processes is huge. Like we live here on Twitter and we see these threads and people giving info and we're testing for fun, text to image and automation with email and posting. But that is monetized knowledge that legacy industries, doctors, dentists, everything that you could throw a rock at in your local town could benefit from. And they're never going to have that arbitrage opportunity forever, but it is there right now. And motivated builders are taking advantage of the open source nature of that AI industry. There are no moats around the monsters like Google, right? They're gone. So it's all about brand building, community, right? A clean front end, reskinning a GPT it just takes a little bit of action, right? There are millions of dollars out there to secure and capture like never before. Now, I could go on and on, but the point is, there will never be a professional shooting fish in a barrel moment like this again in all of our fucking lives. The tales of two-person startups clearing $10 million a year are being grown in this moment. So you got to have that grind and hustle in you right now. In the age of contentment and TikTok 15-second attention spans, this is your moment. It's all of our moments. And it takes commitment, accountability, and conviction. And these things are things that we can actually control as single-souled life forms. Think about that the next time you want to Netflix and chill. Because the broader audience says it's insane behavior to want something more. To push a little harder after five. It takes the art of appreciating the limited time, our scarcest asset, that we all have. But it also takes understanding of the balance of how to spend that time. And I'm constantly having to recalibrate my work-life balance because of 
the magnetic professional opportunity force field that keeps my appetite insatiable and hungry day in and day out. I am a work in progress, a flawed human when it comes to that. But the point is, if you're here and you're in our industry, it's there. There are no guarantees, but you can go and take a shot. And you got to take a lot of shots. I don't even talk about how many shots Jordan missed, right? That's what it takes. We're specks of dust in this earth. Understand the time you have left. That's the asset. Spend it accordingly. And we've been spending it very accordingly, you know, here at Hoge for two plus years. So much so that we got Jersey Racks back for the latest Hoge news of the week. Jersey. Tell him I'm Harlem, oh, oh, oh. Harlem, holy, Canada and baby, star in the hood, we go. AD do snow and oh. Whiskey do green like gold, star. Woo, Jersey. What's up, my man? What is going on? Dude, it's a Friday. <sighs> Fucking grinding week, man. You know, but happy to be here. It always fills me up. How you doing? I'm a little toasted right now. I was golfing all day. First time golfing all year. It was a it was a good time. You break ninety? Uh like a like a good one ten. <laughs> How many beers? Uh, about like seven, eight, and plus, you know, a bunch of other stuff. Just just enjoying the day. A good old Friday, some wellness tools, tools for wellness. People don't understand when you get invited to golfing, it's not just a sport, it's a performance. You gotta like drink, you gotta <laughs> putt, you gotta chip, you got it's impressive. It's a good good day. Dude, dude, when you're a dad, you got two kids at home, you and me, right? You get out to the golf course with your friends for four hours, no one's yelling at you when you're on your phone. You can hang with your boys, catch up, drink, dude. And there was no one behind us. We took our time. Perfect. Honestly, I'd be dead on the floor if I consumed what you just described. But, you know, in relation, man, I can feel that, dude. So, uh, good Friday, man. Good Friday. Uh, dude, a lot going on. This mega vote week, right? I didn't even talk about it in the beginning, but there's a lot going on, man. What, uh, what do you got from your uh, point of view here today on this, uh, on this fun one? Yes, sir. I apologize for any slurring in advance. Um, and I know we have guests today, so I'll keep my in-depth crypto update this week shorter. The world is hanging in there for the time being. I don't know how I didn't hear of it earlier, but I guess this week Russia attempted to land on the moon and failed by crashing into it. And then on Tuesday, India supposedly did land successfully on the moon, although the simulated video they d- they had everyone watch Looked worse than playing GoldenEye on Nintendo 64. Absolute all-time game. No hate on GoldenEye. But with the way images work today, they could have perfectly replicated the landing to show the actual ship performing it, even if it wasn't the actual ship. I don't know if you saw the video, but the video they showed was, (laughs) was hard to believe. They said they landed on the south pole of the moon, though, and will be searching for moon ice that's been frozen for millions of years. I feel like this is a pretty big deal. And I find it so strange that they both happen in the same week. Also, the BRICS Summit in South Africa is going on this week. And they announced that Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, the the UAE, and Saudi Arabia have been invited to join the Club of Emerging Nations on January 1st, 2024. So this is a big deal also because now Saudi Arabia will not be taking the U.S. dollar for their oil. So shit is going to get real weird in 2024. So hang on for the ride to come, and it is an election year. But let me get on with the Hoja news. I want to address an accurate update on the top five holdings, also known as the HojDAL.eth wallet. Uh, On Reddit, an account has been trying to create a fake narrative that in some way the key holders have went rogue with the top five funds. I want to have a correct update on where the funds currently sit, how they are broken down, and how they got there. As you all know, the key holders are myself, Kalab, and Jay Rocco, and we have all been with Hoge since early 2021. We are governed by the community constitution that says every dollar spent from that wallet must go to a community vote. It also says that converting the funds from one crypto to another can be made by key holders with a majority leadership vote. The cryptos they can convert to are stablecoins, Ethereum, Hoge, and liquidity. The community held a vote that was official on January 6, 2023, that voted to convert the funds as follows, 100K in USDT, 100K in USDC, then convert 94,000 into Hoge and 94,000 into ETH. 
as well as use $50,000 for a group LP incentive program and $800 a month for two years to keep our marketing making bills paid for gate IO and white bit exchange for a total of $20,000 on January 6th, the wallet held roughly $440,000. The 28 ETH position it always had in the wallet had gone down. Uh, the wallet currently holds a value of $325,000. So the value has decreased. It was made clear and the community understood that voting to begin di diversifying the funds into ETH and Hoge was now going to make the dollar amount in the wallet fluctuate. It could go up like we all hope, or obviously it could go down. It was the entire point of the risk reward strategy. And we still believe this strategy will pay off greatly in the next bull run as we continue to build and deliver. At the time of the vote, January 6th, there was a lot of fear in crypto about stable coins failing and the community wanted clear guidelines and a strategy on how we could, how we should hold the funds and spread the risk out. So the strategy was to dollar cost average our hoge position over a three month period. We had some really good momentum to start 2021 and our price was going up with the rest of crypto, but has since come down over 50% as we battled a lot of FUD and drama over the summer. We were able to get a good amount of hoge with our $94,000 uh, budget over that period. And then hoge dropped down to the low twos in price and leadership talked and decided to convert $25,000 of the ETH budget into the Hoge budget to dollar cross average a better uh, position and try to get at least 1% of the supply under community control. We were able to grab 4.6 billion Hoge um, position with $120,000 total invested from the budget. And this is around a 4026 average, a little over a $8.5 million market cap. Uh, sadly, uh, the Hoge position is now worth $55,000 and is the main reason for the wallet value being lower. Obviously, if you can look in the future, we would have waited, but that price just looked too good with everything we had going for us. We didn't expect the Telegram nightmare to happen. On the bright side, our Hoge position, our Hoge position can grow very quickly when we attract the hype again. Also, an additional $15,000 of the Hoge purchased in that wallet was to fund the Group LP campaign, helping others gain entry, which provided a 20% starting yield for campaign contributors. The wallet has performed 47 Hoge buys using OptiSwap or OTC swap and was not front run once. The wallet also performed 19 ETH buys, added and withdrew Hoge or ETH to 10 Group LP campaigns, so another 20 transactions as well as paid out the OptiFlow market-making bill for the last seven years. So the key holders have been very busy, uh, dollar cost averaging the best to our ability. Something someone has suggested was to convert another $30,000 into Hoge to lower, uh, through the uh, mega vote to lower our average to magnify any growth we are from the platforms we have coming. And that brings me to the Group LP Incentive Program. This was a massive success in the community and helped fill 10 Group LP campaigns. The community really got behind fixing our liquidity issue and giving Hoge a two-year lifespan for as long as we continue doing these. Some filled within a week, some a little longer. But now liquidity is held in the hands of the most loyal supporters, all unlocking at different times in the future. All of these campaigns have starting yields that range from 4% all the way up to 20%. And the cool part it, the cool part is about OptiVault yield is that it's a true yield. It cannot go down. Once an early withdrawal penalty is paid, you receive your portion of the penalty fee if you can hold until the unlock date. I saw one person on Telegram a month ago say they gave up and had to early withdraw. So one of the campaigns received a nice yield pump already, and it's only been three months. Not only do the campaign contributors get, get to enjoy the perks in the liquidity providing process, this also massively helps the token's overall liquidity score. Through the 14 successful Group LP campaigns, we have been able to increase our token's liquidity by 110% in three months. This is a huge team effort and a massive win for the community. So we had a 50K budget assigned to the Group LP campaign and generated over $150,000 in liquidity while contributing over $10,000 to the Group LP campaign contributors through the early withdrawal penalty. 
as a guaranteed starting yield for helping hold your liquidity. Like I said before, they range from 4% to 20% on a brand that's so early in the world of crypto being built properly. The HojDAO.eth wallet now also owns all the liquidity on our exchange partners, Gate.io and Whitebit. Zenbox stepped down from providing the liquidity for those exchanges. And since the HojDAO wallet was established for liquidity, the community now owns all of the provided liquidity on Whitebit and Gate.io. A total of 5 ETH and 580 million Hoge. Uh, but that's an update on the HogeDAO.eth wallet, where it stands. You can see the wallet holdings by going to Hoge.report and scrolling down to the Sex Wallet Fund to see the breakdown of the wallet. And I'm not sure if Rory is next, but I want to introduce him because I got uh, I got to say something. But now Rory is here to give the community an update on Opti Games and explain the platform token zone. Speaking of explain, if you are not following Re Relias on YouTube, you are missing out. I'm sucked into this action-packed thriller. Will he make it the 72 hours and get to keep the domicile? Or will the fat slob loser win this battle? I'm rooting for you, Rory. You beat the 100-year-old house's plumbing? This guy is nothing to you. Looks like a feng shui addition to the yard to me. But I'm excited to have you join the show. But that's all I got. Back to you, Hayden. Oh, man, dude. You got a lot going on, man. You know, I mean, it's a big week. There's a lot of votes. I mean, you hit it off at the top to, from the Moon Ice to the BRICS Summit, election year coming, man. The world is is moving all over. A lot of stuff that we can't control and craziness going on all over. So focusing it in here in the land of Hoge on things we can, man, it makes a lot of sense. And in the mega vote of opportunity, it's a moment. I mean, look, you, you hit the rumor mill, rumor mill here, right? Key holders are intact. Funds are safe, ooh. The Hoge Wallet history was articulated by Jersey a moment ago, and you can replay it back if you want. Uh, look, man, you going through all the things that it has done, really, Group LP, man. I love Group LP and, and really what it has done, you know, for our straight up LP pool and our community. We got a two year lifespan intact. LP is held in the hands of the most loyal supporters. And look, like, Another product, right, that Rory has there, OptiVault Yield. It's a true yield. No variables here, right? 4 to 20%. I don't think that's on accident. I, I, I like that, 4 to 20. I didn't even realize that. I mean, jokes aside, Rory, the way he's gamified providing LP, it caters to gamblers, right? You got that 20% haircut. It caters to the loyalists looking for stability within their token while it fosters community engagement and cross-community engagement. I mean, imagine with a ton of daily active users across different communities and having a leaderboard and competing against each other and setting, you know, campaigns and who's going to get there first and all in the spirit of, you know, making that LP pool strong and last long. I mean, it's really hard to do that. That's some art right there, my friend. It truly is. And I'm excited for him to come on later and and riff with him and, and really get into it. Um, a lot of other stuff out there, too. Right. The 30K buy. Uh, I mean, look, you know. There's a lot of opportunity. That Group LP campaign, I, I know there's got to be something up there to keep that new incentive program going. We absolutely should. The the data tells us to, and really what it's done is a no-brainer. But uh, a lot going on, and I'm going to have uh, my buddy Mike come on in just a moment. But uh, before I do, it and talk about the Hoge Lemme and Meme Doctor, but Jersey, man, with all this stuff going on, and you got yours, uh, you know, you come on. Are you going to, uh, you're going to go on after that, right? And then Rory, uh, we got, we got some good stuff here, man. Um what do you got going on this weekend? Just beaching it up, beaching it up, relaxing. <laughs> yeah, what beach you going to, man? Atlantic City. Always Atlantic. Atlantic City. So if you go to AC and you go to the beach, do you stop in the casino? Or are you going to hit the pit with your wife? You going to do any of that? Yeah, we normally get dinner, then do it. We have to. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Cool, man. Cool. Well, look, dude. Uh, I'll talk to you in just a little bit here, but. You know, outside of that, man, appreciate everything, and uh, I'm jealous, right? Golf now and the beach. Are you wearing suntan lotion, though? Are you going to put any on? I'm way past that point. I'm super tan. Oh, <laughs> all right. All right. All right, Have buddy. We'll talk to you in just a minute. Yeah, you too. You too, dude. You too. And that is the one and only Jersey Racks, man. He is non-fungible for sure. Putting it in for something more than some failing fiat stored labor costs, right? There's so much opportunity here. It's worth its weight in gold, and people seem blind to it. God bless them. And look, speaking of people that God has probably blessed, you know, 
the next person coming on, my buddy Mike and colleague, and really and me being in Hoge for you know as long as I have over two years and watching us you know have votes and deploy capital for the first time and campaigns and things recently. You know, I always just love being there and, and being a part of it and watching the community and, and whatever it's going through in this chaotic confederation of, of you know, uh, opportunity, you know, uh, just watching it grow is, is just great. And in this moment, right, where engagement is low and our token, its market cap uh, isn't where it once was, right, at times past, the, the thing is, now we have a product suite, right? Now we have an identity. We have things that have real viability and market fit. It's just a matter of paid media dollars and branding out. And in a world where we're trying to broaden that product suite and connect with people outside of blockchain and inside other industries, traditional ones, really, you know, gaming, uh, art, design, there's so many out there. The mega vote is here in a moment. And I said to myself, you know what? This is an opportunity. Uh, Got to do something. And talking to, to my buddy, Mike, off and on for a while, right? And you know, he's worked at some great places, has some great experience and and technical skills of like, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio, but dev style, uh, just riffing back and forth, right? Seeing the pain points going on at Reddit now, where it's like one of our most intimate places and the API fee changes and making it really not, you know, third party app friendly. And the spirit of DeFi, right? And, and decentralization and what we do, you know, the pain point of having, you know, a version, iteration of Reddit. Uh, in a decentralized way, right? And a world where it is inviting and inclusive of creators building something and giving them another home, another instance, right? On, on a Hoge Lemmy to, to set up shop and build community governing and ethos. And it just aligns with meme business. And so, you know, that's where this really co- came from. And na- knowing that there's parts that I have, but I can, am not a dev guy, you know, I'm gonna take it to market guy and product and strategize and put the pieces together. Knowing that, you know, this resonated with Mike as well, you know, has led us here. And so a world of a Hoge Lemmy, you know, with the meme doctor, you got to have a a, gen, a a Hoge meme content generator tool, you know, and, and a world where you can have all these abilities to tell stories and, and spread culture and meme business. You know, we're here. And so uh, I wanted to bring Mike on for a bit. Right. And uh, just kind of let him kind of uh, talk about with me because you guys hear my voice so much. Um kind of what, what uh, the idea is here in hopes that we can uh, build something great for the community. So, Mike, my man. Hey, hey. OG, y'all new to the game. <laughs> Woo! Mike, what's up, dude? Oh, hey, hey. Thanks for, the, thanks for that warm intro, Hayden. Oh, no. Yeah, I no. I can't hear Mike, so. Oh, wait, can you hear me? I even come back. I'm getting the glitch. Jersey, you got to fill can in other- while I leave and come back for a second. Jersey, can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh, okay. Well, I yeah. I'm oh, sorry. So I think it's just him, just his audio. It happens to Hayden every every once in a while when a new speaker comes. Oh, the, yeah. Okay, well, right uh, yeah. I can hear you now. I'm back, man. It's my iPhone. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> good. You know, well... <laughs> So technical problems aside, um, you know, um, you know the tech world is is great. I um, worked um, for Snapchat as well as Imager. I, in like the land of Oz, got to see behind the curtain, see kind of um, some of the how the industry works. And you know, at this time, it is way cheaper to run some of these services. <clears throat> Free tier has gotten so generous because these platform providers are trying to undercut each other. <clears throat> so you can get really generous content delivery services um, and be able to ship out uh, like really high quality files. Um, so I think we can beat out some of the uh, limits that you see on Imager and some of these other meme generation tools in terms of file size. They typically limit around just 25 meg. Um, it's possible to, to have much bigger, like 50, 100 meg files no problem. I mean, certainly YouTube does bigger, huge files like that. But I think 
all of this, what this does is it allows us to, to make something that's a bit better and to allow us to plant seeds in the community and bring new people to Hoge. So this is the idea of having Lemmy, the idea of having our own home base. It allows us to, to bring in all of our brands. So multi-DAO, as that's growing out, people can uh, create their own sub lemmies. But yeah, OptiSwap, uh, Token Zone, all of these people, they can have uh, a common place to to build and to to create these um, these spaces. And that is like the, the spirit of open source. So Lemmy is written in Rust. It's uh, open source. AGPL and um, Postgres SQL backend. It's traditional Web 2.0 uh, app, and but you, we can host that you know reasonably well. It scales reasonably well. We can host um, you know certainly tens of thousands of users for for not too much money, um, and be able to to you know start start creating this this uh, momentum where we can. Um, you know, start expressing ourselves and creating creating memes. Now, memes are awesome because really, what the, what the reason why memes like the the word like where it comes from? It comes from um, uh, Richard Dawkins coined the word. It's, it's it comes from genes and genetics. Genes, the idea of something that spreads. So the idea of creating like a meme generator is really nice because it allows us to create content that brings other people to our site. So we can we can generate the these. Um, uh, these still images or these animated images, be able to put them out on other social media platforms and they're watermarked and they're bringing people interest, uh, bringing that interest back to, to Lemmy and back to Meme Doctor, bringing that strong branding. So, you know, in this world, yeah, it's cheap to, to launch a service, but what, what's expensive is that brand, that sticking power. And um, I think that we can beat out, we can, you know, we can uh, come come to market with something that is clearly a bit higher quality than what we're seeing in the meme generation world and like build off of that open source world, open source mentality, keep all of the tooling open source and, you know, raise more money through Patreon. Like Lemmy right now, they're funded through Patreon. They make about $1,600 a month on Patreon and that continues development on that platform and um, hosting it is all free. So I really want to, I, I like that decentralized development mentality, everything keeping it, you know, if, if, if there's a disagreement, then fork it, right? If you, if you, if you want to, it's, a, it's all free, there are no gatekeepers, but if we stay on Reddit, then there is a gatekeeper, right? It's Spez and all of that drama, that's not going away. There's going to be more blackouts on Reddit. There's going to be more lockdowns, more invasive advertisements and tracking. Well, you know, we can, we can have a privacy centric platform. Hey, we don't need trackers. We don't even need Google or whatever we don't need a uh, google ads we don't need to run any of that because we get we get donations and we just run a service for the people by the people and you know i think that you know this is a good time right now being early in the uh federated uh decentralized social media space with mastodon and lemmy i think this is now a really good time to plant seeds and start growing the community in this new space i mean imagine when reddit was new right imagine when people were starting up new subs like back you know 13 14 years ago well that's like that's what it is now right that's like that that's people are going to be migrating away from this and more people are coming online more people are wanting to be able to connect on the internet and i think that um, yeah, I really like what I see from Lemmy. So that's enough for me right now. I, I hope you guys, I hope you guys, uh, hope that resonates with you guys. So, yeah. Dude, let me tell you, man, I get, I get so inspired when I hear you talk. You, you're one of the best explainers and, and like when it comes to all this stuff in a way that's digestible and understanding. And like, you can tell you, you live on that front line. And to me, you know, and you really helping me fine tune this in a very, very sharp way with the opportunity and the pain points here. It's like when you can be a proactive thinker in a reactive market, it's, it's priceless. And the fact that, you know, right now we're so early that there's an opportunity to lay a foundation just as where Hoge and meme business is at. And it's a perfect time and, and a world where, you know, OptiSwap and its product suite and Hoge AI and, and whatever else continues to manifest, you know, can can have a home in a world and create, you know, their own mean business here at Hoge and connect with other communities. I mean, this is that time, right? You're never going to see it on the charts, but the the industry opportunity in this new day and age of technology and decentralization is is there. And there's no guarantees, but setting, you know, the team up right that's formidable and experienced 
is setting yourself up for the best chance of long-term success. And Hoge is inevitable. Time is the only variable. And having a Hoge Lemmy with a dope-ass meme doctor, come on, right? I don't know if you even said that, but like just to stand something up, right? There's meme.doctor out there now. Basic, you know, there's a meme content generator right now just to show you that, you know, there's a home and a foundation and being able to build it and tell the story and bring it to life and all the storytelling tools that come with it and cross community collaboration, you know, it, it goes together like peas and carrots. And Mike, I'm excited, you know, that we get to bring this to uh, our community because they mean everything, you know, uh, to me. And it's been great having you here become part of the community. I, you know, really understanding getting in here, I really understand the meme business that runs through your veins, my friend. And that is so professionally attractive, you know, in the, in the world that we live in today. It's, uh, it's not every day, you know? So, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, we're, we're like, we're a bit older, right? We're the, we're the thought leaders. We're like the, we got to shape the next generation. These Gen Z, they need to know how to meme, right? You can't be, uh, no, you have to know your meme before you start making them. You can't just like, to just be throwing things together. I think like we need to show people how it's done and then also, um, you know, bring it, bring it forward. Cause you know, there's weird things about, you know, most of the memes you see it's English, right? It, it hasn't really like broken into, it hasn't really broken the language barrier. It hasn't. Um, I, I think that there's other, other ways that this, you know, this art, this art form can be expressed and used. And um, I think that like, yeah, I think it should be explored. You know, I think we're just hitting the tip of the iceberg on these kind of creative tools. And the more of these like creative tools we give to users, they start, they blow us away with what they produce. And, you know, it's um, in this particular, in this particular case, these meme generation tools, it's all running on the client. It's all running in the browser. It's using advanced uh, like WASM to compile down, use whatever libraries like FFmpeg to process video. But all of that's being done on the client and you don't need to pay for EC2 services. You don't need to pay for a compute. It just makes it to the, the primary cost is really around content delivery. And that's one of the cheapest services they have. Um, so it's it's really like, it's just a really good fit for, um, for you know, not every business can, not every internet facing service like that can run so cheaply. But this one, I think it fits, it just fits really well with both this community and kind of like, um, yeah, you know, wh where we're headed. So. It, dude, I'm so excited. Um you know, to get this out there and watch this, you know, come to life with the community support, because I think it can be a foundation for a lot of good. And really, I, I when I like having you, uh, you know, technically there, like you give me Rory vibes, which like is a huge compliment and, and you two unreasonable thinkers and just everything going on really set up to build a product suite that has market fit outside of a blockchain or a speculative casino. And that's what this industry is about, whether people realize it or not. And the ones that do, you know, you call it losing like a battle here now, right, on some bullshit industry. But when it matures up, you know, the, that consolidation happens and you better find some integral, you know, viability and use case. And I think we're always sniffing up the right walls and mean business while the whole world laughs at what is mean business and overlooks it, yet, you know, relates to it no matter what language they speak. It seems like, <laughs> damn. Everyone's yeah, like, memes, memes never die. Memes never die. People, people want to laugh. People are going to like want their friends to laugh. They're going to keep sharing them. So like, um, I think this is just, you know, people need to occupy themselves when the, when the market is down and like, yeah, I think creating our own social media, right. Where we're not, we have our own rules, our own, you know, our own moderation, how it works. You know, I think that that's, uh, that's, you know, that's really, that's real powerful. Um, that's real power in this, uh, in this new world. And uh, I think that's a good investment. I mean, that's a really good way to spend this capital. Because, um, I mean, you know, if we're balancing this against a buyback, like a buyback is, you know, flash in the pan, it's quick sugar, right? Hopefully it builds momentum. But really the lasting momentum is an investment in community, in like growing the community, bringing new people in, new eyeballs, getting people interested in the brand hoge for, for other reasons. So like, what is that about? And I think that, you know, building these spaces and bringing the community together in a meaningful way, I think that that, that absolutely is, is the ticket. So um, yeah, with that, um, yeah, man. <laughs> I'm excited, Mike, man. And I appreciate you making some time to come on and break it down more technically. Uh, it really is a good balance, uh, you know, from the way that even I, I articulate it. Um, so thanks again, man, for your time. And, uh, you know, looking forward to uh, being able to build something beautiful uh, together here for some time to come, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. That thanks for having me.
Absolutely, man. And that is Mike. And uh, look, we get this in and through consensus, you can be hearing a lot more of him and, and really building this out. And I see a lot of like uh, projects that we've already have in our world and a lot of like cross synergy and energy here. So excited. But um, look, let's move on to the next one, right? Jersey, I think you're coming back on, right? You got to have the poll here or, or podium for, uh, you know, running through your little one, two here as well. Um, let me... Uh, let me just uh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> All right, my man Jersey is back. I piss, tell him I'm Harlem, oh, oh, oh. Harlem, holy, can I have baby song in the wood we glow? AD do snow and oh, whiskey do green like gold. Woo! Hey, Roy. Jersey. I don't, I don't need to go again. Oh, you don't? Okay, my bad. That, that was all I got, yep. I just wanted to make sure, right? Got to do it. <laughs> uh, all right, we check that box in real time together. Beautiful. And we get to anchor it out, my friend, before he comes on, right? Like, let me tell you, man, yes, they say he is human, and he is, right? They say he is humble. Okay, but I'm going to tell you, man, Clark Kent, he was respectful and humble, and he was Superman, right? And when it comes to being deeply defied, pure defy, you know, and having capable skill sets that have time and time again ideated, set a roadmap, you know, for development and hit his marks with him and his team. I swear, like he's the Terminator, right? T2, right? Schwarzenegger in his prime style, right? And you don't get that a lot in our industry, much less, right? In a world like Hoge, in the land of Hoge, right? Where moon boys and moon girls have faded away. You know, what's left are, you never know. And when we sifted through, right? What we got here is a diamond, man, that really fosters like such inspiration within our development community and in Hoge in general. And so, Rory, man, from Group LP to everything else, when you've had something, you know, it's always an exciting time. So without further ado, my man Rory, how goes it? Howdy. What's up, dude? I love, I love that movie. Um, how you doing, my friend? Hey, I'm doing well. Uh, I've never been able to join on my laptop before, so I'm I'm excited that this is seems to be working. Dude, I saw Elon drop that update for desktop. I'm scared to test it out, but uh, you know, I have a little confidence now. Uh, knowing that you here we go. <laughs> Sorry, stuff. what? I know there's a little feedback, right? I'm like, hey, it does work, right? I hear a little, yeah. uh, but no, uh, all good, man. Um, well, look, you have built, you know, the world of OptiSwap and delivered every time. And my personal favorite of Group LP is the gift that keeps on giving and making things fun. And I won't sound like Bill Murray right now and say it over again, but you come to us today with something for the Hoge Mega Vote in this opportunity moment, and I'm really excited. And so. You know, for the community that isn't as familiar, for the ones that are, you know, looking forward to diving in deeper, tell us about your proposal here for the Hoge Mega Vote and Token Zone. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I, I am a huge fan as well of Group LP. It's, it's, it's bigger than me. It, it, it took a lot of hours between me and Algo, and then obviously really took the community and the leadership all rallying behind it to get the results that we did, but. It, it's definitely worked and it's been a beautiful thing. Uh, so I, I wanted to hit on two things today. Uh, one is the the proposal that we're putting up for the the mega vote, which that's that's an exciting thing now. Like the bear bear market vibes, you know, it, it's been a long time of price going down and people asking what what's going on, but from my perspective, there's there's so much that's improved now, just in the culture and the way that we're doing things. Like during the during the bull run, it was just normal to throw crowdfunding efforts, lots of money pulled together from the community for things that it it turned out in retrospect had no chance of getting delivered. I don't need to go through the list, but it's it's a real thing from our past that we're kind of in an uphill battle to to recover from in terms of brand image. Uh, but after the re-inclusions and renouncement and everything we're in, from our perspective, it, it gave a solid foundation to start building from. So it led us to create things like uh, group buy, OTC swap, group LP, OptiVaults, 
which uh, we, we've never asked for any funding for. I've, I'm proud of that fact that we've made products that can produce some small, you know, it, 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 we, we bootstrapped up and keep ourselves going. What we kind of failed to do and what I had a big vision for was to expand outside of Hoge. I thought, okay, if we make these great tools and we have good results from them, then uh, other communities will, will want to come on board. But we, we hadn't really got there. So we would reached a point where it, it didn't make sense to keep making new products, just hoping for uh, market penetration. So that's where we started writing up proposals. And the first thing that we started on was a, a gaming concept which uh, I, I know it's almost cliche, like blockchain gaming and, you know, not to shit on the thousands of projects out there, but there's the one thing that we've been looking for, which is proper fungible token integration into games. You know, I just don't, I, I don't want an NFT of my, my silk pants item within the game. Like, I don't care about that. I want to be able to bring in a thousand hoes to, to the arena with a, a bunch of other people and have it work within the game as a, as a primary fungible object that can settle back out afterwards. And I have not seen another project, I, I haven't seen a gaming project yet that is attempted this or, or pulled it off in a, in a good way. So we approached several different layer one blockchains that we uh, identified as having the right characteristics. One of them uh, was the ICP internet computer. Uh, so we, we came to them with this proposal, this architecture that we wanted to build and they liked what they saw. So we've secured the research and development funding to build out this proof of concept again, not needing a dime from the community, um, and building something really fundamentally new that will put Hoge at the cutting edge if we can pull it off. Uh, we're very much in the thick of just figuring things out at the moment. It's, it's not, it's not very fun or sexy, but the point is we're not, we're not wasting our own time on something that it would be risky. We've got it, we've got it covered and we're able to actually uh, move this risk to these other people who just want something cool built on their blockchain. So really exciting stuff. Uh, excited to see how that will play out. Um, dude, I mean, it's, inc it, it, it's a lot, man. And like, you know, you look like my kids are six and eight, right? And they play on Roblox. Roblox takes a 70% VIG, right? You get 30%. But for that, right, it has its value, right? It's cross-platform and it gives you an audience and you can quickly publish a game. And it's far more mature, right? But it's gaming. It tackles... Right, the same type of experiences and, and, and type of target here. And if I understand this correctly, right, having all the nuances of getting this, and I love how you know this can be a currency that could be taken in game and settled outside. It's really cool, it's fungible. Um, you know, this is a game engine, right? It's not Roblox, but it's a world in a new industry, right? That caters to those types of game builders and gives them the tools they need to build their product out and live out of the home, right? Exactly. One of our uh, deliverables in, in our contract with ICP Foundation is to produce a document that gives guidance to game developers. So we're going to have the platform for these the games to uh, run on or be, be linked from a kind of a centralized uh, website. And we're going to have the first token available for play be Hoge. So I'm really hoping to just attract more developers. And by the way, shout out to, to Mike. It's, it's nice to uh, make the acquaintance of another dev. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the day when there's, you know, a couple dozen of us working for the cause. Yeah, man, you guys give me such energy. Dude, I mean, go ahead, Mike, if you want to say something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, we're the lifeblood. You know, everyone depends on us. So it's, uh, <laughs> but yeah. 
That's it, man. I depend on both of you very much so in, 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 in development ways. And you too, like give me that, that energy. And I'm so humble just right to like be around minds like yours and building on this frontier and all bullshit, right? Like that's the, that's the stored labor cost that's priceless, right? And spending your time straight up. Um, yo, so Rory, right? Like if we look at this and you got this gaming engine, I mean, Roblox, right? Hey, different engine, proven formula. Right. And that's one way to go about it. You got Minecraft doing it their way. It's a little more of a lift. Right. Like to scale. But the point is, what's great is there are legacy industries out there in gaming. Right. That have that formula and strategy, but they don't have that engine in a way where it's familiar like Roblox or Minecraft here in our world. And as this industry matures up and becomes more intuitive and point and click and Web 2 front end familiar and friendly and abstraction with wallets, so you don't got to know all this stuff, right? And ENS gets integrated because it will, man, digital identity. Take your gamer tag from here, right? To Roblox, to, to wherever you want. I, just, I won't even get into that, but this is something, again, being a proactive thinker in a reactive market, but really like looking at a monster industry that dwarfs like sports, right? And gaming and the writing's on the wall, my friend. And and that's when, you know, I know I'm in uh, in the right place in the land of Hoja meme business, man. And I really am excited for what Token Zone can bring, dude. Um, Definitely, uh, this, our, man. Like, what type of games could you see? Like a, a a Bed Wars, right? Like server being stood up. My kids play that. They got me into it. It's kind of fun. Lucky Blocks. Uh, I, could someone build something like that? Could I? Yeah, I'm gonna have to to look that up and and get some oh, some fuck. information. I got my damn glitch again. <laughs> damn it. Yo, Jersey, fill oh. in for me for a second. I don't know what's going on. I'll be right back. So off the bat, the games are going to be uh, largely turn-based, and it's going to be a matter of tuning to the uh, the blockchain that's hosting. So the the key characteristic here is that all game logic is executed on chain. So there's no there's no client side silliness. All the computation is done in a trustless way to make sure that the game can actually be fair, since since we're putting our beloved tokens in there. Gosh. But I think there's lots of uh, possibilities for what can happen. And with the settlement time, or I guess uh, consensus time of on the order of one or two seconds, you, you just kind of have to build around that. And we're, we're going to be over the, over the next few months kind of tuning and pushing, pushing that as far as we can. That's awesome, man. And I mean, look, it, having that set up, right? Sorry for the you know, technical stuff before, but having that set up, right? Like someone could go inside even one of these types of games, right? And, you know, take their currency and they could win something, right? Like a, a physical shirt and we could take them from the digital world, right? And, you know, they could claim that in the physical world or take their currency in some way. So the possibilities to me seem like, you know, endless here and catering to something that is, seems like it's going to be everywhere and matured in time, you know, if uh, these existing industries have told us anything, man. Um, yeah, yeah we're, we're really excited about the opportunity and it's, it's very validating for the, the work that we've done basically as volunteers for within OptiSwap. Like we, we make our small fee from every swap, but it, it's not breaking even on the time that we, we've spent on it. So this is it, it's very validating. And our products until now have been. Um, just built directly on Hoge token, basically, and all involve like it, they are primarily like financial games, more or less. We haven't made an app that could actually like someone who hasn't heard of Hoge might actually be interested in using. Like somebody who hasn't heard of Hoge doesn't care about Hoge Group LP, but for a, a game that has proper token integration. The, yeah, there's just so much potential there. Yeah, I mean, well, for any other token. I'm excited, Rory, man. And what do you got going on this weekend? Anything fun or exciting? Uh, well, two, two things. I'm I'm going to binge watch the uh, 1995 series of Pride and Prejudice because <laughs> I need to, need to get some inspiration. And then I need to tidy up my yard. I got a nasty letter from the county because they don't like my pile of logs. So I'm going to bury a bunch of logs. 
damn, dude, like, you're a dev, but you're a man's man, too. And you just, like, you know, I just got even smaller in my little office right here in the moment, you know? And <laughs> you are a man of many talents, my friend. And uh, I hope you enjoy that Pride and Prejudice marathon, dude, and find that inspiration, my friend. You always make me smile. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Thank you, dude. And that is the one and only Rory, man. Just a gifted mind and a builder, right? Like a gifted mind who just puts his head down and builds. And and as you heard, right, bootstrapped everything. He's never asked for funding, right? And, and, and going about the strategy a different way now and, and like the community here, right, in this opportunity, it only makes sense. Like, you know, he's really earned, you know, my respect and trust in, in, in what he does. He's one of the few who, who builds and deploys. Group LP, there, yes, I mean, the market-making protocol on there, the front-run bot killer, right, with OptiSwap. I mean, gamifying Group LP, get the fuck out of here, man. Don't want to waste it on paid media dollars in a fleeting moment. This is the forever product suite. It doesn't cater to the casino right now. And even though that's all that matters, right, to the culture, what matters to the forever industry is exactly what we're doing. And for some reason, the majority of our industry is looking left, looking the other way. This is a moment. You stay away from the charts. Have your shit coining and gambling, right? There's something more here. And, and our secret weapon is that it's an invisible sandbox that everyone overlooks. And, and all like just taken away by quick dopamine hits, right? Artificial dopamine hits. These, It is what it is. So with that being said, right at the end here, guys, we've got a big weekend coming up. And a little guy that makes a big difference, this man, Peter Dinklage, right? He said something, man hit my hoge soul. And he said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. So simple, right? You know, no one can predict the future, right? Undeniably, 100%. But if you have something inside your soul, you know, what do you do to that? You think you got to be safe. You know, you're nine to five, you're this. But there's so much time to not do one or the other, to do both. And if there's something that's inside of you that you see an opportunity, right, or some trajectory that you think you can control in your one life shot, all it takes is that action. And we're always just programmed to have that be suppressed, to take it easy. And recognizing that is a gift and a curse, let me tell you, right? But majority don't. So recognize it. Find the microseconds in your day. You don't get those back, man. You can make your trades back. You can't make the time back. And take advantage of this moment. Right now, it's yet to be molded or minted, right? Whatever analogy bullshit, you know? The truth is, it's there, man. And no one has a guarantee to get it. And the ones getting it today, you know, could be gone tomorrow. I mean, Bored Apes, right? Going down and not bad on Bored Apes, right? It's just more showing you, man. Industries evolve. They adapt. No one was ever destined to be the Mona Lisa of the blockchains. Not all of them. This technology has so much more to offer. It just has to be normalized, right? Not scary and you know, scammy. And there are some artificial forces suppressing that. But look, it's a moment. So go into your weekend, build the future, or take a goddamn shot. And enjoy Pride and Prejudice as well to find inspiration. I might, you know, dip into an episode late night and smile thinking about when Rory said that, if I'm being real. But votes coming up. Get ready. This is a moment for us, people. We'll run it back next week. Take care.